Hello guys, I'm back. Today I will talk to you about block flow diagrams. What are the minimal information that you should add to your block flow diagram in order that your manager, your boss, your company is able to verify the feasibility of a project? My name is Jefferson Costa and I teach students, graduates and engineers how to work with chemical process engineering and plan design. Follow my profile and like this video to get the hundreds of content related to chemical process engineering and plant design. I have a friend interested in doing the installation of a real plant in a foreign country. And based on that, he asked my help. In fact, he asked my consultancy to help them, to help him on how to do the installation of this plant and to help him with the evaluation if this project is feasible or not, the first thing that I did was based on the required production that he expects to have in the country, what is the units, what, he, what are the units, what are the raw materials, and what are the power needed for he be able to install and operate the plant. So, one of the documents that you will develop as a chemical process engineer working with plant design is the block flow diagram. The block flow diagram is a simplification of your raw material balance, of your process flow diagram, and of, your, of all units that is needed to the installation of a plant. So, based on that, let me show you how we can uh, develop what we need to consider and what kind of information it's important to the entrepreneur or to your company or to your manager have in order that he can start evaluating if the project is feasible or not. So the, the first thing to consider when we are doing a block flow diagram is start from the product requirements. What is the amount of product that the company wants to produce? And based on that, we get back forward to define what are the sources needed to achieve those production based on the specification. As the earlier stage of the conversation, you don't need to get deeper in each unit. You need to know at least what are the major units of the entire project. So to produce the amount of urea that he has asked me, I need to consider first what I need, I need a urea production unit. So what kind of raw material I need to the urea uh, production? The kind of raw material that you will choose for a determined or for a specific process will depend on the technology used. Sometimes for the same kind of product, we have different technologies and we can use different raw materials. But in this case, for the production of urea, I need at least ammonium and carbon dioxide. So where will come my ammonium? My ammonium will come from a ammonium production or, a, or from ammonium uh, units. That in this case needs the hydrogen and also nitrogen because with the reaction of hydrogen and nitrogen in my Ammonium units, I will be able to produce ammonia. And you need to consider the final product, the final amount of product that, that is needed. You need to consider the yield or the conversion of your process. And with that, you will define the amount of each component that is needed for your heat and material balance. In this case, only material balance. So to produce nitrogen, I have different ways to produce nitrogen. I can produce nitri nitrogen with cryogenic process or with uh, adsorbent process. In this way, I added a generic unit for any 2 production that will need as a source air. So my raw material in this case finishes in the air. And to produce hydrogen, I have also different sources for production of hydrogen. I have the steam methane reformer using hydrocarbons to do that, or I can use an electrolyzer for, to produce hydrogen from water. So in this case, I use it as reference as I was talking with him about having natural gas available for the process, we considered having natural gas. So the natural gas will be used to produce hydrogen, 
And to have the amount of CO2 needed to my urea process, I need to do the removal of CO2 from the hydro hydrogen process. Although I have combustion, I have, although I have a stream with CO2 available in this SMR project, if I don't do the CO2 removal, this is, these streams available is not purified. The content of, of CO2 is very low and I, I cannot use that on my urea production. So because of that, I need to consider a CO2 removal unit. And in many cases for hydrocarbon or petrochemical industrial facilities, I have a, a mini system where I use a mini solution to do the absorption of CO2 from uh, a stream. So based on that, to produce the hydrogen, I need a methane, methane as gas or uh, LNG that I will vaporize to produce the gas that I need for my production. And I need a demineralized water or boiling feed water to my process. Because to produce hydrogen, I react using steam methane reformer. I react the methane with steam. And this steam can be a uh, imported steam or it can be produced in my hydrogen production. Because as I have a furnace, I have a flue gas and I, I am able to have a boiler in integrated with my process to this way produce the steam that is needed for for the operations for because of the reaction of water with methane i need to make up the, the steam that is needed in the process so in this way i need body feed water and this water has a special quality so because of that I need a water treatment that can be a reverse osmosis, for instance, that will be fed with uh, raw water or processed water. So in this way, I am able to map the production, the amount of product that must be produced, and the amount of raw materials or feed streams that is needed for my process, or for, in this case, for the urea process. Another thing that is important to you estimate in the earlier stages of a project definition is the amount of power required for each unit because what the company will verify is that, is that if the price asked for the product uh, uh, is feasible comparing the cost with the raw materials and also with the power. When we are talking about big company, big process, uh, big industrial process, most of the capex associated with the production of the product are related to the raw materials and with power. As the unit gets smaller, uh, a, a great amount of cost is associated with administrative people. But as we increase the production capacity, this cost is diluted and the, ma the major ones are the power and also the raw material cost. And of course that to, to run or to operate all of these units, I need utilities. And what are utilities? Utilities are streams or are components that is used in your process, but they don't take part of the major process. How, uh, in, a, in another words, to run my rotating equipment or to run my electrical equipment, I need a source of power. I need electricity. So one of my utilities is the electro, electrical power. So I have here as uh, listed in my utility list. For do the cooling of my process, I can use air coolers. I can use uh, uh, water coolers. So one of the utilities that I consider here in this case is cooling water because I will need to do the cool down of some streams here to get the desired and the, the required temperature of the streams. Another thing, another utility that I will need for this process or for our industrial process, most of them, 99% of the process is instrument air because I will have control valves and I will have isolation valves and they are, most of the cases, actuated by 
pneumatic strings. So to have a pneumatic string, I need an instrument air. In some facilities, you will have also the service air, you will have processed water, potable water, and etc. Here I am listing only the major ones in order that my clients can verify what are needed to install or to do the erection and the operation of the urea plant. And finally, especially for the urea production, I will need a source of heat that most often is the steam. So besides the steam used for my hydrogen production, I will need to have also a source of stream to be able to do the purification and conversion of the urea. So in this case, it is also mapped the stream, the steam needed for the process. Verify that for my utilities, I didn't define the amount of each utility because I am in just the preliminary stages of the project and I need to list, at, uh, at least I need to let available for the client at least the raw materials needed for my process, the feed streams for my process, the major ones. If you compare to the utilities, the utility cost will be much lower than the raw material cost. So because of that, when I did the material balance, I listed the mass flow of urea, ammonia, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, nitrogen, air, methane, and water, and not about the utility. However, in terms of utilities, it's important to know how much power it's expected to, to spend in the operation of this unit, because power is one of the major costs of an operating unit. So, for one, each one of these units, based on my experience, based on research, I defined each power consumption for each one of these units here in, in squares, in my block flow diagram. And in the end, I got the total power needed, uh, the power consumption expected for this project. So this way, with, uh, with the amount of production and with the amount of Raw material, each raw material, and with the amount of power, the entrepreneur or my client, your company or your job leader or your manager, they are able to do preliminary feasibilities calculations to verify if it makes sense or not to install this kind of plant in a specific country. So this is where we deal or we work as a chemical process engineer in plant design. We get the product specification and based on the product specification, we verify if it's already, it's not defined. What are the raw materials needed? And we do the as balance. What is the minimum amount or what is, what are the expected amount of each feed for the, the process? And we do also the estimation of power needed for the process because this way, the calculations for the visibility, at, at least at preliminary stages, can be completed. If you want to know more about the engineering documents available or developed by a chemical process engineer in plant design, take a look in, the vi in this video that will appear to you right now. So guys, this is it. I hope you like it and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye-bye.